In this module, we'll be reviewing shoulder x-rays. This includes the AP and lateral views. For the AP view of the shoulder, we will be demonstrating this on the upright bucky. This is largely because this is a much faster workflow, more simple for the technologist and the patient to do this at the upright bucky. It is entirely possible to do this on the table, both tabletop and at the table bucky. But again, your workflow is, is much quicker and it's easier on the patient. So hence, here we are at the upright bucky. Now, what you'll want to do is have the patient stand with their back against the board with their arms slightly abducted away from them. I've illustrated this with a cartoon hand to help you understand what exactly they're doing with their hand. Not only do they have their hand outward and palm face up, but their hand is slightly hyperflexed outward so that you're rotating that shoulder as much as possible to get a good AP view. You're, you're throwing out some of the anatomy. We'll discuss that here in the next slide. But as far as the bucky goes, you can see that the collimator light is extends beyond the shoulder a little bit. It matches with the cassette here. I think they've pulled this, this cassette out just a little bit so you can see where the cassette actually is. The, the camera tube is centered with the patient, with the bucky and the cassette, so everything looks like it's aligned well. Your crosshairs are the only portion that you need to pay specific attention to uh, in this circumstance. It's it's not so hard to identify where exactly the shoulder is, but to get consistent films that are appropriate for the radiologist and the physician, you're going to want to use some benchmarks. First, find the patient's clavicle and palpate slightly below their clavicle. You might want to use two fingers. You can see the clavicle outlined on this muscular guy. He's got his clavicle lined along here. You can see this guy's clavicle as well. That um, thin bony uh, protuberance sticking out right there. So once you find the clavicle, use your two fingers and measure just below that. And then as far as side to side, you're going to want to locate this deltoid muscle. You know how the deltoid muscle is at the top of the arm here? It rounds off about right here. So we'll get two fingers and we'll measure two fingers in from the deltoid muscle. So where your two fingers intersect, then we'll shine our camera crosshairs right there and it'll be a good centering point. Now I've uh, created this virtual cassette and uh, I like to do my cassette sideways because part of your objective here is not only to get the shoulder on here but you want to get the cl clavicle in its entirety which goes all the way to the sternum. So you're gonna uh, you, and you also want to include the scapula as well so you've got a whole girdle here that you're trying to achieve not just the bone right here and the shoulder and a little bit of the clavicle. So let's have a look here in just a second at what that looks like. A good technique for a shoulder x-ray is 10 mass at 64 kbp. Mind you, that is a technique that's designed for the upright bucky utilizing the grid. So here's a good examination of a shoulder. We've got the, uh, the anatomy for the most part in its entirety of what we'll want to look at. You've got the humerus uh, bone here, the, the humerus, and it's in, uh, you've got the tubercles in profile. We'll, we'll go over that in just a minute. It uh, interfaces with the scapula, and of course you have the clavicle coming in that meets the scapula as well. Let's identify some of this anatomy for you. We're going to kind of color in the clavicle so you can see it as it overlaps the ribs and comes out. Then we'll look at the scapula. Can you see the scapula, the outline of the scapula? Let me show you where that range is from. All the way around here. It's the largest bone in, in uh, this whole image here. At least takes up more real estate in the shoulder x-ray than anything. And then of course we have our humerus. And one thing I wanted to point out is you know that your humerus is in good AP position when you have the tubercle that comes to the outside. I love this little dimple here. Anytime you see that dimple right there, you've got a good tubercle in profile. And then there's an inferior tubercle. So it gives, gives this kind of an oblong uh, circular uh, look, but th then you've got your dimples and your protuberances that are sticking out on both sides. In contrast, you'll see that the lateral is more cir circular uh, and less defined. 
And of course, there's our centering point. Uh, we're smack in the middle of the scapula and in the centering point. I mentioned earlier, most technologists will use the coracoid process, which is actually coming out towards you. Some people can feel it uh, from the front, but you know, for beginners, it may be a little bit challenging to palpate that. Hence, we're using the two fingers under the clavicle and uh, uh, medially from the deltoid muscle. Here's a couple of examples of overexposure and underexposure. Remember, we've got to evaluate all three bones in this setup to appropriate whether or not we've got joint issues or bone issues. We've burned out the clavicle here. We've burned out the outer part of the humerus here. Nothing funny about that. And then, of course, you've got a lighter underexposed area that does not allow us to see the articulations clearly or the bony patterns. Now for the lateral shoulder, it is exactly like the AP shoulder. This may very well, very well be one of the easiest examinations you're going to learn simply because the only difference between an AP shoulder and a lateral shoulder is where you have your hand. Remember where we had the hand last time? Exactly where this guy has it. We had a, a virtual hand right here. Remember that? Well, let's paint a picture. And let's imagine this guy folding his hand and putting it on his stomach. See that? He brings it up on his stomach. Now, not, not so much that the thumb is reaching or the hand is reaching up into the x-ray field. You don't want it to interfere with your examination. But this will rotate your humerus so that it will be in profile. We've got a good lateral examination. Again, our crosshairs are two fingers below the cat clavicle and two fingers uh, in from the deltoid muscle. The hands are on the stomach for the lateral, always. You may want to hyperflex them and bring their hand high up to the stomach, maybe up close to the inferior portion of the pecs, but essentially this is where you want their hands. All other factors remain the same. Even the technique, which is 10 mass at 64 kbp. And now for the anatomical evaluation, I wanted to bring in a uh, a look at the previous film that we had so you can kind of compare the two. Remember how the humerus for the AP was kind of oblong. We had a protuberance here and a, 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 a indention or a dimple here and we had our protuberance on the outside. This is more rounded so these things kind of disappear into the bone as the bone has been ro rotated. In relation to all the other anatomy, nothing else will change. It's just the position of the humerus for the lateral, and, uh, and of course, this is indeed a good lateral. And that concludes our review of the shoulder x-rays.